Hi, I'm Brian English, Wappler Forum named Hyperbytes, and in this module we're going to carry on dealing with our management of users and roles. So here we are exactly as we left ourselves in the end of the last module. We have a straightforward bootstrap table displaying the table data from the registered users. What I need to do now is to add in the ability to be able to manage that. So what we're going to be looking at is I need to add a, an, an edit function so that the user's details can be manual edited by the administrator if needs be. We also need to be able to delete a user um, because somebody has been thrown out of the, um, the site or perhaps a false registration or whatever. And lastly, we need to be able to manage their roles. So what I want to be able to do is to add three management icons in this left-hand side of the table. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open that responsive bootstrap table, open up the head, and we're going to add before a header. Just reselect that. I'm going to duplicate that another two times. So we have three headers in there. We obviously need to do the same with our content, our cells. So again, we're going to open that, scroll down, pick our first cell. We're going to insert before, we're going to insert a cell. And then again, I'm going to duplicate that twice more. So there we have our three cells, which will be our edit, manage roles, and delete. I'm going to do that via icons. So first thing I'm going to do is in the cell, I'm going to add a button. And I'm going to do that to each cell. And these buttons will be the buttons that will be used to link those actions. Having done that, we need to move that text there where it says cell. Don't know why, but it's just not wanting to select that text. But don't worry, we can also do it from here. So there we are. We can remove that. So we've got our three buttons. We're going to have uh, edit is going to be a green button. Our delete is going to be, no, we'll do the rules first. And I'm going to make that a yellow button. And then our delete is going to be a red button. But I don't actually want text here. I would prefer to have a icon. So I'm clicking back on the button. I'm going down to our font awesome. We need to then scroll down a little more and you can see the flag there indicating the icon. And this is going to be a pencil icon for the edit. And we need that to be larger. And now once we've done that, we can you remove that text there that says button. Looks like we've probably got a carriage return in there or accidentally have put our a line break in. So let's just have a look. Um, there's our two buttons. Where's our third button? There. Yeah. Notice this happens just occasionally. We, you can end up having a break inserted in there. I'm not sure whether that's me or whether that's Wapler at this stage. Um, but it's far from catastrophic. It's easy enough to remove. We're going to go into font or some icons again. We're going to add that flag. And I'm going to use um, users cog as our symbol for our roles. And again, I'm just going to remove that text that says button. Notice there it has added that break in again. So I'm sort of gut feeling is that maybe at the moment Wappler's doing that for us. I don't know why, but again, easy fix. 
then lastly we obviously need to add our delete button and at some point I will just be telling you to do this um, and I will expect you to be able to do it on your own without me having to handhold you uh, but we'll be using the trash symbol uh, again make it bigger let's delete that and that time it's done as we wanted <coughs> I'm just going to take those headers out and then as I like to do I like to make these buttons um, block level so they fill the entire cell that's just personal preference so there we are they are block level and there now we have our three icons our edit our define roles and our delete icons and our data and from here on now we can work out um, how to implement those actions so we're going to first of all deal with our edit and I'm going to edit in a modal so I'm going to add a dynamic modal in here and we're going to call that, call that modal modal edit user open that up we title we'll give it is surprise surprise edit user and then we're going to put a form in here and I'm going to use the usual bootstrap editor and if you remember from uh, our SEO days what did we need to do that well first of all we needed to have a server action to pull a single record over and then we needed to use our update action to save the form so I'm going to first of all add our server connect this will be con single user that should be our users read action and don't forget we're going to no auto load it at this stage because we don't have a parameter to send it we're going to send that parameter as part of the click action so let's save that we need to have an on click action to this button and that on click action is going to load that particular server action in so on click we're going to con single user load and we're going to load it with the parameter from the repeating table that we have um, which is our user ID So you can always tell you've got the right parameter and you picked it from the repeat rather than from the parent action because it will put its the single entry and it won't be prefixed with the actions um, full title so select that we can now save that just to keep ourselves at uh, safe from mistake and now let's have a look at that modal we're going to first of all I need to take that paragraph out because we don't need it we're going to go into generators form generator our form will be populated or saved using the update action we've got some extra fields in here because they've been pulled in through the globals which I just need to take out We certainly don't want to update the user ID because that is fixed. So all we're going to leave ourselves is date of first name, last name, and email. And we're going to populate that from our single action query. It's now it's you see now it's it's pulled in various fields from us for us that we've got the data sign up, the validate, the auth code we don't want to be manually changing them in any way um, so let's no we'll, we'll leave the validate and the sign up in place just in case we needed to um, 
and we need to hide that user ID because we don't want anybody to be able to see that entry. There, there's our form. We've got our sizing. Let's have it large. You'll see by default, Wapler has defaulted to date format, but we actually don't want to do that because if we're going to use a date picker, then we really want to use Wapler's own inbuilt picker, which is far, far better than the um, date picker that you would use in the standard bootstrap. We need that button out. Let's hit save on that, just to consolidate where we are. Add maybe a little bit of colour to that header. Let's give it a blue background. Let's give it a bit of white text. Um, say that we need our good old, our old friend notifications to be able to add a notification on the success of that form. So I'm going to pick the form. We're going to pick the dynamic events server connect success and in the success success event we're going to send that notification to say updated now we need to now to add the unauthorized event the error event um, I'm going to leave you to do that one I've shown you enough times now you should be able to do that one absolutely fine so I'm just going to save that and now we're perhaps in a situation where we can actually test this. So let's just have a look. Let's fire up that page. Let's click on that. Oh, it hasn't worked. Well, I know how it, why it hasn't worked because I've completely forgotten something. When we have that click action on that button here, if you remember, we set in the action to call that event. What I didn't actually do is open the modal. So it would help with modal show. And once we know that's worked, we'll deal with the closure of the modal, etc., um, within the events within the um, form itself. But in the meantime, let's just have a quick look, see how that goes. Click on the button. There's our modal, opens up, shows us our date as it should. So we know we're capable now. Now let's go back into our modal. pick our form because now we need to make sure that our form actions works on server connect success within the form we also need to I like to reset the form we need to hide the modal and we also need to refresh our users list so that the data in that will look or will uh, show everything that we need to do. And I probably just lost those updates because I clicked out of the screen. Sorry about this. Sometimes I'm so busy talking, I forget where I'm clicking. Yeah, we're going to hide the model. We're going to, we've sent a notification. We're going to reset the form. And we're going to refresh that action here. Save that. That should do all that we need. And then if you remember, we also added one more thing that we do um, within the modal itself, within it, the modal's actions in a dynamic event when the modal is hidden, or we hide the modal, they both seem to work pretty much the same, then what we want to do is to just reset that form just to clear out any data that we have. Let's save that. Let's fire that up again now. Let's just check that everything works as it should. I'm going to just going to put a Y on the end of my name there. Uh, I'm going to save that. We've got the updated message. For some reason, the form hasn't closed, uh, but you can see the action has worked correctly. So I'll probably just see that we've forgotten when I redid that quick action to close the modal. Yep, 
Yeah, I put modal show rather than modal hide. My apologies. Just click the wrong thing. Save that. Fire that up. Edit. Save. Message. Modal closed. Exactly as we want. I'll just try it again. I'll take that Y off the end of my name. Save. And that is the update of the uh, the individuals now. Um, all sorted and set. <laughs>